Welcome to Holiday Salute, a tribute to our armed forces. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another year of Holiday Salute. I'm Mike Gooding, joined by Nicole Livas and Philip Townsend. Believe it or not, this is our 37th year of doing this program. Yeah, and we're excited because over the next 30 minutes, we've got some great stories to share featuring our military members and their families during the holidays. And you know what else? A look at some familiar faces from the past. That's right, but we begin with the amazing story of the Battleship Wisconsin and the gift it brings every year. Holiday joy to everyone in Hampton Roads. Just when you think it can't get any bigger or better. Oh, we have so many more lights. It is going to be so much fun this year. There's also a brand new experience called Mistletoe Marina. Imagine walking through a Hallmark Christmas movie. That's what it's like. It's on the other side of Nauticus, between Nauticus uh, and the Half Moon. And it's just beautiful. We've got our boats lit up. It's, it's not part of the battleship. It's completely separate, brand new, and it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. Winterfest on the Wisconsin shows us there's no limit on holiday joy. Aside from the one million bright lights adorning every inch of the ship, there are quite a few new experiences to check out. We've added so much this year. We have a new train display inside Nauticus. We'll take you down below the ship in places that we've we've never opened before. There's also a cool new Elf Door Discovery scavenger hunt, which expands into downtown Norfolk. Yeah, so we have uh, elves here at Winterfest on the Wisconsin, and these cheeky little elves have put doors up everywhere, and you've got to find them. There's also a new Santa experience at Winterfest. So we are um, inviting folks to come and drink hot cocoa and cookies and sit inside the wardroom for a very special experience this year where we're going to tell the story. It was the night before Christmas. This year is the 400th anniversary of that classic poem. And so we're going to celebrate it. Nobody tells the Grinch what to do. And the Grinch is back. I must tell you, the Grinch, people are, as many people come to see the Grinch as they come to see the lights. He is amazing. He's doing brand new shows in the Mistletoe Marina. Of course, he's lighting up that big, beautiful Christmas tree on the battleship three times a Night. Need a snack or a drink? They've got it. Last year, we served 738 gallons of hot chocolate. We're trying to break the record this year. So hot chocolate, wine, beverages, the whole nine yards. It's going to be a lot of fun. Winterfest truly offers a great interactive experience for everyone. If, whether you're with your family, whether you just want to come down and get in the spirit, it is a great place to do it. I mean, you You've got the best view in town. We're right here on the downtown Norfolk waterfront. And organizers are ready for even more guests to check it all out. 13 News Now is a proud sponsor of Winterfest on the Wisconsin. To get more information on tickets, prices, even discounts, just head to 13newsnow.com. And ahead, we'll hear from the USO about their dedication to military families. The holidays are upon us, a time for family, friends, laughter, and lots of good food. To our entire Navy family, sailors and spouses, and our children, you've worked hard and sacrificed so much throughout the year. So take some time to enjoy this joyous season. You've earned it. That's right. Your support is the greatest gift you give our Navy and our nation. So from our Navy family to yours, happy holidays and happy new year. This year, the East Coast-based Navy aircraft carrier on deployment is the USS George H.W. Bush. They shipped out from Norfolk way back in August. Since deploying to the U.S. 6th Fleet Area of Operations, the Bush Carrier Strike Group has worked alongside NATO partners and allies, strengthening U.S. bilateral relationships in support of deterring aggression in the region. It's important work, but not easy, especially at this time of the year. Being deployed over the holidays, it's it's sad. It is bittersweet. Like my husband and I, this is our first time apart. I miss my family. They all do. The 6,000 or so ships company and Air Wing members say it's hard, but they're proud to be serving their country. It can be difficult being away from family, uh, but we know we're out here doing something important. And our squadron's like a family too, so uh, we stay busy and it helps out a lot. Um, it gets sad sometimes, but we got to think about it that we're doing everything for our families and for everyone else in the world um, with a lot going on right now. So it's, it's kind of sad, but then again, we have to think about it's bigger than us. And even though Team Bush will only be home for the holidays in their dreams, they say they're making the best of it. It is pretty what, rough being away from your loved ones and people you care about the most, but overall, like, 
been here every day, 24 hours a day, you start to develop your own type of family here and it it makes being away not as bad as you would think. This will be my first time being away from the family and it's unfortunate, but I'm actually kind of looking at it from a half, a glass half full attitude where even though I'll be gone from family, I have the opportunity to you know be on board, protecting our liberties and, and freedoms, and also hopefully get an opportunity to experience some new exciting places. Um, you miss home a lot, but um, it's good knowing we're out here keeping people safe and we just make the best of the time we can have here and spend time with the family that we made on the ship. Hi, I'm Captain Dave Pollard. I'm the commanding officer of the USS George H.W. Bush. And on behalf of the entire Avenger crew, we wish you happy holidays and a Merry Christmas. President Bush stated, let future generations know the burden and the blessings of freedom. Today, the entire Avenger team stands proudly to bear that burden of freedom in the European theater during these holidays so that you can enjoy the blessings of that freedom at home with all of your loved ones. To my wife, Jen, and my entire family in the Hampton Roads area, I love you, I miss you, and I can't wait to see you soon. And from the entire crew on board George H.W. Bush, we wish you all the best in Sealing Invisibility Unlimited in 2023. Holiday Salute, a tribute to our armed forces, continues after the break. Holiday Salute is a tradition in and of itself. So for the past few years, we've been adding to that and cherishing and looking back on specials from the past. One in particular has former reporters Joe Flanagan and Laura Taylor trekking all the way to Israel in 1989. From the Holy Land, Merry oh. Christmas everyone, I'm Joe Flanagan. And Shalom, I'm Laura Taylor. Thousands it's our children, isn't it? <laughs> An epic adventure revisited. Standing over the old city of Jerusalem. Yes. The year was 1989. Reporters Laura Taylor and Joe Flanagan tasked with telling the stories of our sailors and Marines abroad. Back then, the one-hour special was called Navy Christmas. You might think leaving your family for a life at sea would get easier over time. It doesn't. Veteran sailors say each deployment is harder than the one before. And the heartstrings that bind them to home seem to pull stronger each time they go to sea. My dad was in Vietnam on an aircraft carrier, and I knew what it was like not to have a loved one at home. And They do their jobs during the holidays because that's why they're here. Their trip to Naples, Italy would become even more special. That was after Laura somehow commandeered a flight to Haifa, Israel. Did not think it could ever happen, but you were, you found a way, you were persistent. We were very lucky. And it paid off, because there they struck storytelling gold. Shalom thanks to one of the most memorable characters in Holiday Salute history. And I would say the highlight was meeting Gila. No question. She was known as the mother of the Sixth Fleet. Gila Gerson was the director of the USO in Haifa at the time. To this day, Joe and Laura moved by her warmth and compassion. Gila is the reason sailors from the Donald B. Barry found a home away from home during deployment traveling here to a local orphanage to spend time with children there, many sailors missing their own. It was a much needed Mecca of love. The Barry sailors are welcome to a Sabbath dinner with a song of peace. The dinner, the music, the singing and the dancing brought many of the sailors closer to their own children at home without dad at Christmas and made everybody feel this was no ordinary port visit. And they giving their time, their private life, to their countries. I mean, you must appreciate that. She said it's just about love. And that woman's light gives me goosebumps. Huge. It just gives yeah. me goosebumps. The, uh, a trip of a lifetime, best retold by the people who made it all happen 33 years ago. Absolutely. Well, as we wind down, we wish to you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And thank you for watching. What an amazing trip, Joe. 
want to say Merry Christmas to my wife, Bonnie, my children, Joseph, Joshua, and Emily. I miss you, love you, hope you have a great Christmas. Take care of the dogs and uh, make sure they get enough presents too. A beloved holiday tradition every year is the placing of wreaths on veterans' graves to honor them and remember them during this joyous season. National Wreaths Across America Day's mission is to remember, honor, and teach. The tradition dates back to 1992 and is carried out by coordinating wreath-laying ceremonies at Arlington National Cemetery, as well as at more than 2,500 additional locations in all 50 U.S. states, at sea, and abroad. But the need for the numbers of wreaths grow each year as more and more veterans pass away. The Pew Research Center says the number of living veterans will continue to decline over the next 25 years. By 2014, the Department of Veterans Affairs estimates there will be around 12.5 million veterans, a decrease of around 35 percent from the current 19 million living vets. It's a challenge every year to, you know, raise enough money to be able to place, you know, remembrance wreath on, you know, on each grave, you know, at each headstone. But that's something that we think is a worthy cause and something that we take very seriously. Bree Kingsbury of Virginia Beach's Corporate Development and Community Relations Director for Wreaths Across America. She says the organization is on track to raising enough money to pay for 2.1 to 2.2 million wreaths this year. Each wreath is $15, um, and it is not a taxpayer-funded program. You know, a lot of people mistakenly think that, you know, being in the shadows of Washington, D.C. and, you know, the federal government, but it is not. 100% of our donations um, come from corporate and individual donors. Um, you know, we celebrate their service, we honor them, we remember them. And anyone that sees a precious little Gold Star kid, five, six years old, that I see every December, stand there and they, and they place that wreath and they salute, you know, their mom or dad, if, if they don't shed a tear or, or feel something in, in their heart, then, you know, they, they might need to go to the doctor and have something checked out <laughs> because there's just no way that, that you can see that, you know, see that with your own eyes and, and not feel moved and feel so, so grateful that we live in the greatest country on earth and we have the greatest military that supports us. I just wanted to say I love you, Joaquin, and mommy will be home uh, soon. And mom, Frankie, Bobby, Destiny, I love you guys, and I can't wait to see you guys once I get back home. Back here at Winterfest on the Wisconsin, where there are more than one million lights on the ship. This event opened Veterans Day week, which is fitting to those who serve and have served. I spoke to the executive director of the USO about why that organization is so important to our community. I care very much about the men and women who risk it all for our, for our safety. That's what I believe, and I get to live it every day. Paula Moran just can't hide her love for the USO. She served many years now as executive director for the Hampton Roads and Central Virginia Division. If you're in my age bracket or older, you think USO, you think entertainment, you think Bob Hope. The entertainment is memorable, but there's much more to the USO's mission to keep service members connected to family, home, and country. We serve both the service members that are deployed, we serve service members that are here in CONUS, and we serve their families. We do lots of events and programs for spouses and children, um, and it's things like coffee connections. You've probably seen the USO lounges at the airport. The group helps them pass the time as they head out for travel. They're getting taken care of and they can wait if they have a delayed flight. We're there for them to take care of them. We have volunteers that are very well versed in the workings of whatever airport at which they volunteer. The USO also has installation centers which offer events and programming year round. We do programs, coffee connections. That's something that we do here a lot. We are a host for FRG meetings so that the men and women who are spouses and who are part of the family readiness groups can come here and have their monthly meetings. This space is available. But like everything with the pandemic and tough economic times, Moran says the USO is shifting. We've unfortunately been downsized. We've lost about a third of our team. Um, and it's it's difficult. I mean, this is the USO is pivoting um, some of its resources and focus. And the organization needs more volunteers, especially at the non-airport locations. We really need people that have military access uh, because we have a hard time getting volunteers for our installations. It's just difficult to do. One thing our military members and families will never have to do is pay for the USO services. And it's always free. We never charge. We are funded basically primarily through individual, corporate, 
and foundational contributions. And the USO works with other organizations to offer help to our military. We have a very well-established network of other service providers with whom we maintain very strong relationships. And because everybody I know personally is in this for the right reasons, we all collaborate. There's no competition here. If a service member needs it, we all work together to find a way to meet that need. For more info on the USO, just look for a link on 13newsnow.com. You can also check our website for tickets to Winterfest on the Wisconsin, which runs until January 1st. 13 News Now is a proud sponsor. Holiday Salute, a tribute to our armed forces, continues after the break. We are going to stay in 1989 for this next one and stick with the reunion theme. Joe Flanagan reuniting with then commanding officer of Donald B. Barry, a man he had to win over with a lot of hard work and a little bit of charm. Uh, your camera just tilted again. Can't see your smiling face. There we go. 33 years since we were on the Donald B. Barry. Reporter yes. and captain reunited. I'll be the one in the white hair. Yeah, I'll be the one with no hair. That's <laughs> Joe Flanagan and commanding officer of USS Donald B. Barry back in 1989, a man with a name that gets a lot of attention then and now. I feel the need, the need for speed. Meet retired Captain Tom Cruiser. With your name, A, how often were you teased? in your naval career, and uh, B, have you seen Maverick, Tom Cruise's latest? <laughs> I, no, I haven't seen Maverick, but... Uh, it's I've... outstanding. Now, I just happen to be in the neighborhood, so... Joe I'm... assigned to the military beat during the holiday back when they first met. The trip abroad to Italy and Israel came with all the cameras, the gear, the glamour. Yeah, film that. Right. It wasn't something Captain Cruiser was wild about at first. You, you, you expected it to be a real pain having newsies on your ship. Yeah, I was not very happy about that, to have, <laughs> to have all these, you know, these news weenies on board. <laughs> and it, was, it was totally different from, from what I expected. But oh, glad you Thank goodness. Early mornings and late nights following his crew around and telling their stories one time over. Joe spreading cheer as old St. Nick helped too. Oh, 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 oh. Memories made on board and ashore. The night we all went to the Haifa pub, what a great night that was. Everybody relaxed, let our hair down. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the, uh, the beer that we drank, the Maccabee or... What beer? <laughs> They've been friends ever since. Tom's now retired, living the good life in South Florida. Three grandchildren that are 10 miles away, and, and I, you know, I see them on a, on a daily basis. And... Joe is a grandfather now, too. Still local, still a storyteller, still proud to look back at the critical work of our service members and the privilege of bringing their stories front and center during the holidays. It's still every Christmas Eve, it's called Holiday Salute, but uh, good on them for uh, acknowledging the, all the military here in Hampton Roads, not just the Navy. And uh, I think the pe people look forward to it, particularly the ones who were miles and miles and miles away and wonder what, what the hell are they doing over there, you know? Yeah. As long as they don't show that that sequence from the bar, then we'll be okay. <laughs> what a walk down memory lane. <laughs> it's good to see you, Joe, and I, I appreciate the, uh, the opportunity, and stay well. Okay. You see do you. the same. Uh, shout out to my mom. Uh, she sends me packages every month, uh, and my dad as well, my sister McKenna, uh, my friend Jacob. He's, he's sending me a package this month, uh, and shout out to my, the rest of my entire family. It's a big support system. I'd like to shout out to my wife, Sarah, and my kids, Cameron, Jacob, and Amelia, and all our friends and family in Hampton Roads. It was perhaps the greatest gift that millions of veterans will receive this holiday season, the PACT Act. This is the most significant law our nation has ever ha passed. 
to help millions of veterans who are exposed to toxic substances during their military services. The $277 billion Sergeant First Class Heath Robinson honoring our PACT Act will secure Department of Veterans Affairs benefits and primary care for vets exposed to burn pit toxic substances by establishing a list of 23 cancers and respiratory illnesses presumed to be linked to the poisonous smoke. It's well past the time that we address the impacts of toxic exposure that have been endured by members of our military. But opponents argued the cost of the bill is too high. CBO estimates the PACT Act would require over $300 million in new government spending. Not a penny of those costs are offset. For too long, veterans have been told that it's too expensive to cover the range of health issues that they have as a result of their toxic exposure. That's wrong, and we must do better for our veterans. In the House, 34 Republicans joined all 222 Democrats in voting yes. On this vote, the yeas are 256 and the nays are 174. The bill is passed. The measure will help 3.5 million vets. Vets like former Army Specialist and Iraq War veteran Josh Nicholson of Virginia Beach. I struggle every day and I do have some issues related to the burn pit exposure with my um, with my breathing and my nasal cavity and stuff. This isn't something that, you know, we're just giving to veterans because they're veterans. This is something that they earned. They were exposed and they deserve to be cared for. We have an obligation when we send people uh, overseas, uh, when they come back, if they uh, come back with um, uh, diseases or injuries related to their service, of course we ought to uh, pay for those. And this is the least we can do. And this bill, um, it literally is gonna save lives. And so I'm incredibly proud. Nicholson, for one, is thrilled. Is this a happy day? It absolutely is. Happy day for me and millions of other veterans out there. But the victory didn't come without some 11th hour drama, a snag in the Senate, which almost derailed everything. Veterans groups and advocates refused to take no for an answer. We, in essence, yesterday took benefits away from the people who have been impacted by war that we sent off to war and we turn our backs and say no. They put politics before the lives of our families, our loved ones, our service members, our veterans who have given every last measure. There's no excuse. Every day that this delay goes on, veterans are unable to receive care. This is wrong. We will not stand by and allow veterans to be denied their duly owed health care. These people thought they could finally breathe. You think their struggles end because the PACT Act passes? All it means is they don't have to decide between their cancer drugs and their house. Their struggle continues. In the end, the bill did finally pass, and with the stroke of President Biden's pen is now the law of the land. Uh, I'd like to shout out to my mom and dad and my grandparents, to all my family members that have made it possible for me to be here. And I'd like to shout out to my brothers and sisters. It's weird for them to not be able to see me for the holidays, but I love you very much. And Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Uh, shout out to my wife, Kimberly Coronado, and my daughter, Scarlett Coronado, because uh, they're the real heroes in this for accepting everything and, you know, carrying on. And that's going to do it for another year of Holiday Salute. It's been our honor telling the stories of the men and women in uniform, those serving now and who have served in the past. To all of them and to all of you, we want to say thank you and happy, happy holidays. holidays. Thank you for watching Holiday Salute, a tribute to our armed forces.